quickly shift gears now to sports news with Ayotunde Balogu. Many thanks, Gimba. Nigeria will face five-time world champions Brazil, Portugal and Oman in Group D of this year's Beach Soccer World Cup shuttle for November the 22nd to December the 1st in Paraguay. The Sand Eagles qualified for the competition, having finished as runners-up in the 2018 Africa Beach Soccer Cup of Nations staged in Egypt. Coach Auda Adamo's men will begin their quest for glory when they take on 2015 winners Portugal on November the 22nd. Oman will be up next two days later before they face Brazil on November the 26th. AS Pelicans of Gabon have beaten Rangers International FC 2-1 in the first leg of the second qualifying round of the CAF Confederation Cup in Libreville. The Gabonese side scored twice within 30 minutes, but new signing Namdi Egbujo pulled one back for the Flying Antelopes before the end of the first half. The second leg comes up on Sunday, September the 29th at the Namdi Azikiwe Stadium in Enugu. In England, Senegalese forward Sadio Mane scored twice as Liverpool came from behind to preserve their 100% start to the season with a resounding 3-1 win over Newcastle at Anfield. Marcus Rashford scored first, uh, a first-half penalty as Manchester United claimed their second win of the current season. A Musa Jinnapur's fine solo effort saw Southampton claim a hard forward three points at Sheffield United. Tottenham produced a breathtaking first-half performance to brush aside Crystal Palace. Tammy Abraham scored a brilliant hat-trick and an own goal as Chelsea destroyed Wolverhampton Wanderers 5-2 at the Molyneux. And Norwich City resisted a late rally from Manchester City, the English champions, to end an 18-match unbeaten run at Carrow Road. 3-1 it finished. Well, the Guinea Football Federation has appointed former Togo manager Didier Six as its new coach. The 65-year-old Frenchman, who is expected to sign a three-year deal, will take charge of the Sili Nationals bid to qualify for the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations and the 2022 FIFA World Cup. He replaces the Belgian Paul Pugh, who was sacked after Guinea exited the 2019 AFCON in Egypt in the round of 16 stage. And that's Rap and Sports News. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. It's back to you again. Zimbabwe's former president, Robert Mugabe, has been honored as an icon, a principled leader and an African intellectual giant at a state funeral held in the country's capital, Harare. This comes after a week of disputes over his burial, which threatened to embarrass President Emerson Nangangwa. Mr. Mugabe left behind a country wrecked by hyperinflation, dollarization and deeply entrenched corruption. But many Zimbabweans also remember him as their country's liberator from white minority rule and for the broadening of people's access to education and land. Crowds chanting and drumming liberation songs gather at the 60,000 capacity national stadium in Harare to bid farewell to Zimbabwe's founding father, Robert Mugabe. Although the stadium is only quarter full, supporters praised the 95-year-old who ruled the country for 37 years. The only ways that I can say that Mugabe is our great icon, he is gone but not forgotten. Even though I wasn't there in the 1980s or whatever, but that little time that I was with him, I enjoyed every moment that I was with him. <laughs> Mr. Mugabe's coffin, draped in the green, black, gold and red Zimbabwe flag, is marched slowly into the stadium, accompanied by a military band and an escort of officers. His wife, Grace, in a black veil, and family members follow behind. Is that we have the casket and Paul Bieras, who are three-star generals. Thereafter, we have the family members. Over a dozen current and former African leaders, including Algeria's former president, Olusha Gwabasonjo, attend the funeral, hailing Mr. Mugabe as a pan-Africanist who had dedicated his life to the people of Zimbabwe. Robert Mugabe's successor, President Emerson Manangagwa, addresses mourners at the National Sports Stadium, calling the late leader a visionary. The aged old national question that is of our land which had been occupied by settlers for over a century. 
to him. This was the grievance of all grievances of our people. As the result of his unflinching stance, the land has now been reunited with the people, and the people have now been united with their land. Mugabe was praised as a champion of racial reconciliation when he came to power in 1980 in one of the last African states to throw off white colonial rule. By the time he was forced to step down in 2017 to wild celebrations across the country of 13 million people, he was viewed by many at home and abroad as a power-obsessed leader who unleashed debt squads, rigged elections and ruined the economy to keep control. And the main news again, President Muhammad Buhari today asked ECOWAS leaders not to relent in efforts at stamping out terrorism from the region. The president also called for common ground to defeat the monster completely. He made the commitment and comments at the one-day extraordinary summit of ECOWAS in Burkina Faso. Also today, the Ogun State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal dismissed the suit of the candidate of the Allied People's Movement, Adekunle Akinladi, challenging Governor Dagbo Abiodun's victory. The tribunal said the petition is lazy and deficient. And African leaders, including Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, bade farewell to former Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe today as his country held a state funeral for him. And that's how it's been on the news at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for being a part of it. On behalf of all of us here, have a splendid night, friends. Good night. Thank you.